place to rest your case then. All right. We are alive now. It's a good place to rest your case at. It's at the cross. Uh, God has, this week I was thinking a lot, I guess some of y'all noticed the, the picture I posted on Facebook, those that are on Facebook. Uh, 
I saw something somebody had put, and it just disturbed me. And uh, it showed some people standing up saying, we don't want God in California. They got big signs up. And then the next one shows the wildfires and everything going on. And it looks like you're driving in the very depths of hell is what it looks like. Listen, man may not want God, but we need God. <laughs> we need, we need God. I've been praying for revival in, uh, in our country, and, and I've been praying for revival among churches. I, I really have burdened for, for our country. I'm burdened that God does something, something great. Some people talk about a third uh, awakening, uh, a great awakening in our country. And I'm praying, Lord, please, I'd love to have a great awakening in our country. And I was thinking down, and I, I wrote down some things, and I saw some things some people had wrote. And I just to think about where we're at as far as uh, the state of our, our country, um, someone said that uh, in, in America right now that our sins have, would surely make our fathers blush if they looked over our shoulders. We are unrivaled in immorality. Videotaped sexuality of every form of perversion imaginable. Uh, Canada right now has legalized folks having relations with animals. In the United States of America, plural marriage is coming, folks. It's coming where folks can just live together under one roof and call it marriage and have a bunch of folks, men and women, all living under one, under one canopy. It's coming. The victims of uh, abduction and sexual slavery in our culture is getting worse. You have to watch everywhere you go with your family and your children. You have to watch for folks. They're, they are, are prey. And right here in... in the Bible Belt, right here in Crystal Springs, right here among us. Well, you've got to watch every time. You have to, it's a shame you have to tell your children that they've got to be careful for everything. They've got to watch everybody. They can, that, uh, I remember the days that we used to get out of the house and mom would see us around dark, about supper time. We'd come in the house and, and we would leave and, and it was there. We might have gotten a little bit of trouble, but the neighbors would get on to us Y'all remember those days? And if they had to call my daddy to come get us, we was in trouble if he, if he came out. But it was more like throwing rocks at bottles and busting them in somebody's yard. It wasn't the kind of stuff that's going on today. It's, we're living in a different time, a different time. The, the things that are going on in the, the millions uh, that are there among that. Over 3,000 babies uh, killed daily in the United States of America. 70% of the world's illicit drugs is in the United States of America being used. 70%. Pornography production capital of the world is the U.S. of A. Satanism is on the rise. Witchcraft is on the rise. Out of the top selling books in our country right now, many of them have to do with sorcery that we think is fun in our country. Some of the largest movies that are out, the more satanic and the more things that, that point to the underworld, they become the biggest box office thrillers of our time. Freedom of religion is no longer a right. It's a conception. They think it should be freedom from religion. There's cases all over this country trying to kick God out of the public domain. You say, what in the world's going on, Brother Jimmy? I believe Jesus is on the horizon. That's all I believe. I look for a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. Listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being morbid. I... I believe that God can still do great things in the U.S. of A. Nine years ago, I came to Hopewell Baptist Church, and I told you then, I believe God wanted to do great and mighty things. And I still believe God wants to do great and mighty things. I still believe God can build a church in the midst of this decaying culture. 
I still believe people can be saved. I believe there's hope for America. Some of the darkest times in our country was uh, preceded some of the greatest awakenings that happened in our country. And so I'm just saying, God, do it again, God. Just do it again. Do it again, God. Do it again. I love the commercial with the, the little boy and, and he's standing there, little girl, I don't remember which it is, that, that's standing out there with her daddy and all of a sudden they look and the sunset does its thing and, and goes, oh, and it's like her daddy does it. And she looks at her daddy and says, do it again, daddy. Do it again. <laughs> the daddy can't do it with the sunset again and he can't do it with the sunrise. But in her eyes, her daddy could do it again. He could do it again. Listen, I've got a father that can do it again. He can do it again. And I want to preach this morning kind of on the redemption of God's people, the redemption of America. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Hosea. That's kind of them stuck together parts in your Bible. Hosea. We'll be... Reading in Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15, we're just going to read one passage and I'm really going to tell you the story of what's going on in the book of Hosea. We read about the story of Hosea and Gomer and, uh, and, uh, and that's, that's a wonderful story. And, uh, but it's only, if you read the book of Hosea, it's only 14 chapters. I read, I read the whole book this morning, 14 chapters long. And the story is about God and the children of Israel and Ephraim and, and what goes on with them and how that God, how that God desired to work in the lives of his people and they did not want it. And I really see us in America in that situation. God desires to work in the United States of America, but I'm scared to say that I'm scared that we don't want it. We really don't want God to work. But I hope a hope well won't seem to work. Amen? We'll talk about them other churches. Is that all right, y'all? Them other folks don't want it. Amen? But, but we want it. In Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15, stand with me, if you will, in honor of the reading of the Word of God. This is, there's a few things I'll stand for, and as long as, as, as I can, I'll stand for God's Word if I can. I, it says in Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15, it says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. You see what God told them? God says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and they seek my face. And in their affliction, they will seek me early. Father, we want you. So God, give us what we need to see you move in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. I still believe God can start revival with just one person. I believe that it will spread to two people, and three people, five people. A few years ago, I preached a revival at Sardis Baptist Church, and Brother Billy was there, and when I preached the revival, it was a great week. And I thought it was one of the things that stood out in my mind at that church was there was three generations of folks that got saved that week. There was a man that was probably in his 70s. There was one in about his 35 age, and then there was a young boy that got saved. And there was three generations that got saved. And God just spoke to my heart and said, I can still do it with all ages. I, I can still... I can still save anybody, anytime, anywhere. I, my God can do it anytime he wants to. And I'm glad to know God's still in the saving business. But in Hosea, let me uh, preface and tell you kind of the story of Hosea real quick, and then I'll get back into the Word of God. The book of Hosea is written not about Hosea and his wife. I know it's a strange concept. Hosea, God uses that relationship to describe how he feels about his children. God had a plan and he used, you know, when you tell God, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> God may tell you to do some things you don't want to do. 
When you tell God, Lord, I'll go wherever you want me to go. And he said, that's great. How about across the street to your neighbors? Lord, I'll go anywhere else. But I don't like them. God says, yeah, but I love them. God, I'll go to anywhere you want me to go. And he says, how about the deepest continent of Africa? And you're like, God, I'll go anywhere else that you want me to go. Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. But Hosea was a, a man that wanted to be what God wanted him to be. And so he told God, Lord, I want to do whatever you want me to I'm a prophet of God. And this is what happened. He told God, I'm a prophet. I want to do what you want me to do. And God said, go marry you a harlot. Go back and read the book of Hosea. That's what God told him to do. God told him to go marry a harlot. Now, he asked the local deacons where to find one. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, man. Right, but, uh, but, but he said, I know that. <laughs> that ain't right. Hey, Amen. But, Brother Ricky. But uh, anyway... But God told him, he said, you'd have to be for devotion to understand what that, that last word for. But, but God told him to go marry a harlot. And he did. And they had children. And the names all mean stuff. And, 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 and every one of them's name means something. And, and Hosea means salvation. And, and Gomer uh, I mean, they, they, all, they all have meanings, but we're not, I'm not getting deep in all that. God told him to marry a harlot, and then after he married her, they had children together, and then she went back in the very lifestyle that he married her out of. He told her, he said, I'll marry you and bring you unto myself, but I want it to just be me and you, nobody else involved in our life. And she said, well... I get good gifts from all of my guy friends, and so I'm going to keep doing what I've got to do to be able to get what I want. And then she ended up going back in that lifestyle, and he put her away. It's a horrible lifestyle, horrible story. Don't end there. Gomer found out that when the devil's through using you, he ain't got use for you anymore. Amen? When the devil's through destroying your life, he ain't got use for you anymore. You can go do what you want. There is pleasure in sin for a season. Whoever tells you it's not is a liar. <laughs> there is pleasure in sin for a season. The reason the druggie goes back to the drugs is because he likes to feel most of the time. Not every time, but... Most of the time. They're seeking something there. They're, the reason that folks go to their addictions, no matter what it may do, is they're trying to fill something and trying to fill a void that's going on in their life, and they're trying to fill it with things. And so she had desires of, of things and, and monetary things and things of this world that she got, and she liked the favor, and so she went that direction. And the devil's always got a good song to play. He's always saying, come on over. It's fine over here. Just come on over. The problem is, when the devil's through with you, he's through. Hosea then goes to the auction block. She's getting ready to be auctioned off, all used up. Used and abused and thrown away. <laughs> and for 15 Shekels of silver and a little flour, barley, is what the bid was. He bought her back. I said, why in the world would he do that? He bought her back. Why would he do that? <laughs> because somewhere along the line, he was a pitcher of the father looking down saying I knew what you was when I, bought, when I married you but I still loved you and I still know what you are <laughs> and I still love you but see if you read the book of Hosea 
it tells the story of how that God got to the place that he wanted them to repent. The Bible don't say that Gomer repented of what she done, but if you read the story, she must have because it's a story about the redemption of when you got right that they would seek me when it gets that way. So the Bible implies, if you read the book of Hosea, that Gomer is there one day. <laughs> and she goes, boy, I sure wish I could get back home. I know that that old boy won't have me back. <laughs> but I sure had it good with Hosea. And I don't deserve a man like Hosea. The word Hosea means salvation. I don't deserve salvation. And old Gomer, <laughs> inside her heart, just accepted where she was. But she had a longing in her heart back for the back for what she had lost. <laughs> Little did she know she didn't lose it. The Bible said, charity never faileth. <laughs> wow. He brought her, and he brought her back home. There's a story, if you look, in the Word of God, and I could show you a lot of scriptures this morning. There was a dilemma that God had with the children of Israel. In Hosea 7, 2, he said, They consider not in their hearts that I remembered all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. God said the children of Israel's sin was just at his face. I wonder how God looks down at, at the old U.S. of A. of our sins up in his face. It's a shame that I think we hold our fist up in his face. Huh. Hosea 7, verse 13 through 15 says, Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. Destruction is upon them, because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, said, Yea, uh, yet they have spoken lies against me. They have not cried unto me with their heart. When they howled upon their beds, they assembled themselves for corn and wine. They rebelled against me. Though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me, God said. People sitting around blaming God for doing these things. Mm. Hosea, Hosea 8, 7 says, they have sown to the wind and they shall reap the whirlwind. That's a saying a lot of people know, but they don't know where they got it from. They've sown to the wind and they reap the whirlwind. Kind of like when you throw your hand up in your daddy's face. You sown to the wind, but you reaped the whirlwind. <laughs> you found out that little old fella ain't near as, as uh, feeble as you thought he was. Amen? It goes on, Isaiah 13, 9, said, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. The problem is that God's not destroying America. The problem is we're destroying America. We're destroying what God has built. This country was built upon religious freedom. It was built on righteousness. It was built on holiness. It was built on strong families. It was built on folks keeping their word. It was built on some things of some character. And we've lost our character and we're blaming God for destroying our country. And God says, I'm not destroying it. Y'all are destroying it. But God is a gentleman and he won't shove himself on us. He'll back off. Someone said one time, says, why did God allow those killings in school? God says, y'all expelled me out of the public school system a while back, told me you didn't want me there. How can you blame me when you said, we don't want you here? God says, I have done it. I've stepped out. There is a dilemma. We need help. <laughs> but there's a decision. And I like this. Hosea 6 says this. Come, let us return unto the Lord. It says, he hath torn, but he will heal us. He hath smitten, but he will bind us up. And after two days said he will revive us and the third day he will raise us up and he shall, we shall live in his sight. And shall, it says, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the mornings and it shall come as 
unto us as rain, as the latter rain and the former rain upon the earth. He's saying, hey, it may be dry, and God may have allowed it to be dry to get our attention, but God wants to send the rain. We sing, there shall be showers of blessings, but we showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, God, send it. Send, your, send that rain, that spiritual rain down on us again. The decision. Hosea 10, 12 says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up fallow ground. It is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. What's He saying? He's telling the children of Israel that God says, If you'll do this, I will do what I'm wanting to do. I will bring mercy. I will bring... Listen, I think America is the greatest country in the world. But I do think that all it takes is just a little bit more of us pushing this, this our wickedness in the face of an almighty God and God's liable to let us crumble to the very foundations. But God's up there saying, you think you're good now. You wait till you come here and, and wait till you come back to me and see what I can do with you. The desire, the decision, but not only the decision, the desire. He said, come. He says, for I have desired mercy, God says, and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. You know you can't bribe God. You know you can't pay Him off. God says, I don't want your burnt offerings. I want mercy. I want you to give me the knowledge. I want you to find out what I do and why I do and how I do. I want you to know me. I'm not asking for your stuff. I want you. God's not looking for your stuff. He's looking for you. If He's got you, He's got your stuff. Amen? When somebody gets married, and with this ring I thee wed, and with all my worldly goods, and with all my worldly goods, I thee endow, I thee endow. You know what you're saying? You got me. When you got me, you get my stuff. What's yours is yours? Or what's yours is hers? Amen? What's hers is hers, and what's yours is hers. Amen? That's about what it, it, it ends up. Amen? But you end up, you realize that that God says, I don't want your stuff. I want you. I want you to know me. I want you to know why I do what I do. God says, I'm not difficult. I, there's things about me you won't understand. There's things about me you may not ever grasp. But God says, I'm not difficult to understand as far as what I want from you and what I'll do for you if you do what you're supposed to. If you do what you're supposed to, I will bless you. If you will, I will and God says, that's not hard. Just seek me. Just turn from your ways and seek me. I want to do great things. I want great things in my life. How about you? <laughs> and if God says, if you will do this, I will do this, I think I would do that. You say, yeah, me too. Well, then why aren't we? Because he has said it. I'm reminded of the decision. He finally, you'll go on and read in the book book of Hosea, it's a good decision that they make finally. God ends up saying some good things about them at the end. There's a story of a little boy. He took, a, he took a, some wood. And he worked on it every day. He formed it and shaped it. Got the wood wet and bent it the way it was supposed to do and put notches in it and glued it together and put him a mainstay on it, and made him a boat, a sailboat, beautiful sailboat. Little, I mean, but it was beautiful. He worked on it, he varnished it, he sanded it. Oh, he was so happy. It was, a, it was his pride. It was his pride and joy. One day, he was out sailing it and playing around with it. And the water was a little swift that day. A little wind came up when he had his sail up and he thought he had hold of it. Lost the little string he had attached to it when he was trying to sail it out in the water. He ran after it fast as he could, but he couldn't catch it. He couldn't swim fast enough. The wind was carrying his sailboat and as it went around the, the bend, 
he watched it go and he was so disappointed, he was heartbroken. About a month later, he's walking through town and he notices in the window of one of the shops a sailboat. He looked at it and he said, I didn't recognize that sailboat anywhere. That's my sailboat. <laughs> I carved every piece of it. I know every, I know every niche. I know everything about it. I spent hours putting and building and putting my everything I had into that sailboat. He ran inside and told the man, he said, Sir, sir, sir. He said, That's my sailboat in your window. That's my sailboat. I want my boat. He said, Son, I'm sorry. He said, Somebody sold me that boat. You can buy it. He went home and gathered up all that he had and he come back. He give it to the man. <laughs> Walking out, he's got that boat in his hand. He said, <laughs> I'm so proud. He said, I made you. <laughs> but now I bought you. <laughs> and you're mine. You know what? That's all God wants. He said, I made you. But now on an old rugged cross, I bought you. <laughs> and he just wants us to acknowledge that we're his.